Hi, uh, this is Jonathan Gardner. So we just, uh, I wrote for you, I told you what the Maxwell stress tensor was. Uh, we did a couple of examples to see what some of the components of the ten stress tensor looks like. If you want to, you can get a big piece of paper at home and write out the entire nine components and, and you know, admire it. What I'm going to do now is tell you how to multiply a vector times a tensor. Okay. So you might have taken linear algebra. Congratulations if you have. Um, if you have it, that's okay. You don't really need to understand linear algebra to understand what I'm going to show you. So let's take some vector a, right? It has components x, y, and z, not x, 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 y, x, z, y, x, blah. So I'm just going to use a sub i. This says that this is a vector that only has one um, dimension. Okay, it only has x, y, and z. It doesn't have it doesn't have nine components. It has one, three components. We're going to multiply that with the dot symbol with the tensor any tensor, i, j, and the result we're going to get back is going to be a vector, you know, with one dimension. Tensors have two dimensions, scalars have zero dimensions. So we're going to get back, a, instead of a scalar from the dot product, we're going to get back a vector. And the components of the vector, so each component, each of the jth components, if it's given by the simple formula, sum up along i, x, y, and z, a sub i, times t i j. Okay. Notice there's no vector hat here. There's no double vector hat here. These are components of the uh, vector a and components of the tensor t. Okay. This just says add them all up and that'll give you the jth component of the resulting vector. So you have to do this. You have to do this sum three times. Okay. Each sum requires three multiplications. You have to multiply nine times in order to get the result. Okay, so this box tells you how to multiply a, a, a vector and a scalar. And you could write this out at home, you know, invent some vector matrix or whatever you want to do and you know, practice doing a couple yourself. But this is the notation that's really simplest. It, it's, it takes a little bit to get used to, but it's really the simplest. Okay. Now, we're going to calculate the divergence of Maxwell stress tensor. So we take del nabla, which has three components. It behaves like a vector. I'm not going to draw a vector hat. I don't, it's not a, really a vector, it's an operator. We're going to do the dot product, same operation with our Maxwell stress tensor, which is a vector, which is a tensor, I'm sorry, two components. And would you believe it, we're going to get back a vector. Normally the divergence gives you back a scalar, but when you take the divergence of a tensor, you get back a vector. And is it hard to believe that that is going to be equal to x, y, uh, i equals x, y, and z, not j, of, okay, not rocket science here. Uh, what is like uh, del x? Well, del x is just d by dx. That's the x component of the del operator. What about del z? d by dz, okay? Well, del i means take that ith component of the del vector and multiply it with the ith jth component of the tensor. Let's actually do that. So our tensor definition is right here. Let's apply this to operation. So this is going to be equal to the sum of del i of epsilon naught e i e j minus one half e squared plus 1 over mu naught minus 1 over half of b squared and I screwed up these are b's not e's okay okay there you go there's the answer not this is only if you do this for one set of x, for one set of i's so if you do it for x y and z add them together you're going to have the j's left over Okay, the J's are saying that you need to tell me which component you're looking at. Are you looking at the X component or the Y component of the resulting vector? You plug that in for the J. Okay, now let's distribute this del I. So I'm going to go over here trying to reserve some vertical space. So we have the sum of, well, epsilon naught doesn't change. Let's put a big box around that. It's constant. But then we have del i e i need bigger parentheses times e j plus 
E I del I E J. We can put these in a box like this. You'll see why later. I'm going to show you a hint as to why I'm doing that. If I could find the piece of paper that I had. Here we go. Here's a hint. Okay. You get it? Hint, 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 hint. Okay. Anyway, moving right along. Minus one half. This is going to be one or zero. You can't take the derivative of that. So, uh, but you can take the derivative of that. Okay. So that's the e components. The b components are exactly mirrored. Let's just copy it over and try to remember to substitute. Um, oh, I did it. B for E. Did I do it? I think I did. Okay. This is one component. This is the jth component. Okay. But look at this. You're adding D by, dx ex plus dy ey plus dz easy. What's that? What in the world is that? Well, that, my friend, is the dot operation, the, the divergence of e vector. Same thing here. Okay? Same thing here and here as well. What's this? Well, only when, this term only survives if i is equal to j. And so this is actually Okay, same thing for this. Okay, so the x component is going to take the x derivative of e squared. The y component is going to take the y del d by dy of e squared. And the z component is going to take d by dz of e squared. Okay, let's write this out a little more. So let's write this out as an actual vector. So instead of using j, we're going to actually put it all together into a real vector. So this is all equal to let's see del dot e times e x plus e y plus e z well that's just del dot e vector times e vector plus e vector dot del we have e x in the i hat direction we have e y in the j hat direction we have e z in the k hat direction that's just e vector okay and then over here we have dx in the i hat direction, dy in the j hat direction, and dz in the k hat direction. What is that? That is the gradient operation. Okay. Plus 1 over mu naught. I'm just going to copy the letters. We don't have to think about the same logic. Okay. This is the vector in more familiar vector notation that is the divergence of this Maxwell stress tensor. Okay, Let me walk you through one more time. I think I kind of went a little bit fast there. Um, so imagine this is the jth component, right? So this, when you substitute j for, with x, is all multiplied by i hat. And this, when you substitute j with y, is in the j hat direction. And this, when you substitute j with z, is in the k hat direction, right? And we don't have any weird multiplication things going on. We're just adding this times e x i hat, this times e y j hat, this times e z e k, e z k hat. And so this is just basically this times the e vector. Same logic for this, this times the e vector. This guy's a little more subtle. First, we had to say everything but the j term survives, right? And then we say, well, this is d by dx in the i hat direction, d by dy in the j hat direction, and d by dz in the k hat direction. Well, what's that? That's the gradient, right? And so here we have the result of the divergence of Maxwell stress tensor. And here we have. It's not going to work. Here we have the, let's see if I can put them side by side. Can I? Oh, I can. This is beautiful. This is the force per unit volume. 
word for word. It matches, except for this extra term. And so we can actually express our force per unit volume with the amazingly simple and beautiful simplification. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do Tij, I'm just going to do T vector, T tensor, erase that. Minus epsilon naught, and the S vector is 1 over, hold on, S vector is is uh, 1 over mu naught E cross B. So E cross B is mu naught the S vector. So the pointing vector, OK? So let me write it up again. I totally bombed. This is the force per unit volume given the electric field and the magnetic field at that point. Um, I think it's amazing that such a complicated equation could be shown here. Okay. Once again, this, the Maxwell stress tensor is given right here. Very simple formula. Um, should be rather easy to memorize. So here we go. We have calculated the force per unit volume. And one final thing before I wrap it up. Let's calculate the total force. So the total force is the volume integral of this dA, dt, right? So we have d tau minus d tau, right? Let's apply the divergence there. So the force is equal to the surface integral of the Maxwell stress tens tensor dot dA vector minus epsilon naught mu naught there we go there is the Lorentz force equation with simplifications made possible thanks to Maxwell's equations there it is. These, this is the the um, differential form, and this is the integral form. And I think it's time to call it a day. So, congratulate yourself if you're able to follow along. Take care and goodbye.